Yo, my peoples, what's up? My name is Jason. Thank you so, so much for joining me for another Dice Tower Review. Today, I'm taking a look at Commissioned the Call. This is a expansion for Commission, which was a one to six player cooperative game in which players are, are reenacting the spread of the early Christian church in the Mediterranean area in the first century AD. Uh, this one was a favorite of Sam Healy, who no longer produces content for the Dice Tower, uh, but please go ahead and look at his video. I am very, very happy to continue coverage uh, for Commissioned. I'll show you all about how it plays, and then I'll tell you what I think. Without further ado, let's go to the videotape. All right, so before we get into the elements that the call added to Commissioned, I'd like to go over very briefly what the base game is doing so that some of those elements make a little bit more sense. So, uh, in Commissioned, every player will have a player board and a personal deck that is tuned to their character. Uh, over the course of the rounds, uh, each player is going to be playing uh, cards down on this player board and then making collective decisions about uh, how to implement those cards to do stuff on the board. So most of the cards involve movement, so then we are going to spread out uh, depending on how much movement we have uh, and how many actions we can take throughout the land. Uh, so then uh, we are also going to be overcoming obstacles. Uh, the obstacles here are you know, ways that the board tries to stop us from moving and so much stuff from the trial deck. <laughs> Uh, the church will grow on its own. It will add members. Uh, and your goal, uh, as I said, is to uh, bring Christianity to all the land, represented by each city represented uh, or having a cube on it before the end of the game, which, by the way, is the end of the trial deck, which is the main source of nastiness uh, in Commissioned. Commission, the base game, had a deck building mechanism. So in the base game, all of this would be face down. So you would actually not see a market and you would deck build uh, to improve your personal deck. Uh, kind of just, you know, draw and see what you get. In Commission, the call, uh, they have uh, allowed players to see what your options are. So you can deck build a little bit more effectively and tune your strategy uh, to what you can uh, to what you want to do a little bit more effectively with some face up cards. Also, as a part of the call, uh, these are some scenarios that came with the base game. You get two more scenarios that are a little bit more involved. They add special tokens on the board and they change the geometry of the board somewhat. So it is the same basic game. Be uh, going to be able to play differently, uh, you know, spreading the church or healing divisions, uh, different things like that. Uh, but for the most part, I'm going to focus on the basic game, which is spread the cubes all over the land. All right. So then I am also going to show you these two new players. Uh, the game is very aware uh, that there were no women amongst the original 12 apostles of Jesus. However, it does give playable characters, uh, Priscilla and Phoebe, uh, so that you can enjoy uh, different parts of the Bible because they were uh, in the original Bible doing uh, traditional roles. And those roles are represented in the way their decks play out. The Call also adds a special solo-specific module. Uh, this is the Ethiopian eunuch encountered by Philip in the scriptures, uh, who spread Judaism or Christianity, however you want to call that, uh, down to Ethiopia uh, alone, <laughs> or by himself but never alone. Uh, so there are solo-specific rules. Really, the solo play uh, changes in two specific ways. One, your starting deck is different. In a regular commission multiplayer, these would be very specific decks. But in uh, solo mode, you actually can pick from uh, the different decks. So you have Phoebe, Andrew, Priscilla. You can kind of construct your initial deck to go along with your starting scriptures. So that's actually pretty uh, cool because it adds a lot of flexibility very early on. And also, what's going to happen is this elder staff is going to be key to certain regions depending on who is where and where your major pieces are, these missionary uh, pieces. So uh, the trial deck normally affects uh, you know, the main character, which you're only the main, only main character, so you don't want to get trialed to death. <laughs> so there's going to be a mechanism that is going to allow the uh, trial deck to affect different people at different times. So let's say I have... A missionary here in red then I would put a, a, a 
a cube here and from turn to turn this would rotate depending on where the apostles are uh, so you have a little bit of uh, relief <laughs> at least for your main piece uh, but the trials are going to be distributed everywhere and you have to kind of respond to the board one final wrinkle for the solo mode uh, this was a die that you roll they return in multiplayer that kind of uh, did different things on the board very minor effects here, the uh, effects have been reworked to be a little bit more impactful. So you can get a mission stop or a growth stop or good stuff can happen. <laughs> it all depends on what you roll. So lots of little things to uh, beef, beef up the solo uh, so that uh, you can play solo commissioned effectively. And so the last piece, the most mechanically impactful piece of commission the call is the chains deck. So uh, you get a few of these, and they do basically uh, the same thing with some wrinkles, depending on the card you get, and they're nasty. <laughs> if you play them, you lose up to four church members at the player's location. All of the, all of the chains do that. Uh, different ones will add different stops. This one in particular will add a fellowship stop for each member you could not lose. So those are new. These kind of eat members. <laughs> Uh, as they come up, so like, you know, you end the round and it's going to kind of take one member away. You also have your usual mission stops and growth stops. Uh, so they're bad. Um, if you don't play them uh, and you decide to take them into your buy phase, then they're worth minus four faith, which is the currency of the game, and you have to discard them into your deck. So it really is not advantageous to keep these into your buy phase. Uh, so then, though, you can get rid of these in a number of different ways. It, as you play them and you absorb the bad effect, then they'll go away uh, and go back into the chains deck. So it's kind of like, you know, absorb it once. Uh, so there's probably, uh, given the choice, you, you're going to want to play it uh, depending on how your board is going, but playing it is, is okay. Uh, there are a number of cards that grit, get rid of the chains as well. Uh, and the main way, though, in multiplayer that you're going to want to try to deal with these is through the restore deck. So... When you are reach the buy phase, so you're going to have your action phase, and then at the end of that uh, set of rounds, you're going to go into your buy phase. If one player has the, a chain, then another player who does not have a chain can forego their buy phase, what the game calls the mature phase, but they can forego their buy phase and instead draw one card from the restore deck. So the restore deck is like a little story. So it's going to read a story and then give the play the person with the chain a choice. So now remember the person without uh, without the chain with the chain uh, does not see this. It's only the person without the chain that's trying to heal the person that can see this. So as an example, I just asked your help on a critical church effort. You think to yourself, why are they asking me to do something else? You already have so much going on. Do you tell me you aren't available to help or ask me which other thing? You should do uh, you should stop doing so then it's almost like a scenario in the early church and it's giving you the choice uh, and it's going to give you some effects depending on what you choose pretty important to note that the effects are not all the same it's almost like there's a right answer and a wrong answer <laughs> so uh, depending on how well you are immersed in the world to be able to answer uh, and then you would follow whatever the rewards are the giver of the card will have a reward, and also the person receiving the blessing will get a reward, discard their chain, get extra cards, that kind of thing. So uh, the trial deck will add chained uh, cards to your hands. Uh, all sorts of other stuff can add chain cards, and there's ways to get rid of it as well. In solo, there is no restore deck. You're relying on those cards, and also uh, in this chart over here, if you roll an eight, you can get rid of a chain as well. So that was commissioned the call at the table. And how I like to evaluate expansions is to assess how the expansion adds to the base game and also how it fixes slash improves upon the base game experience. The additions are but welcome. Uh, they're not the draw of the expansion, but it's nice to have extra trial cards, extra player boards. Uh, the women disciples as player boards are, are a welcome addition. So all that is good stuff. Uh, in terms of what you're really uh, getting out of the call are two uh, innovations that were asked for by folks who liked the base game, myself included. Uh, so the first one is a real solo mode with one board and one hand of cards uh, worked so that it kind of works within the entire geometry of the board. So it was doable at two, but it got a little bit cumbersome uh, with the one 
excellent. I have nothing bad to say. Uh, the game is snappy. You know, I don't have to, you know, do build two decks. I have the one deck and the one deck is craftable. So I can kind of borrow cards from, you know, different decks in case I want to have a different experience. That is super uh, well done. Um, my one tiny niggle about the solo is that it's, it could be, uh, there's a lot of steps because you have to move the Elder Staff and you have to roll the die and you have to pull a chalk card. Uh, a fair amount happens in between turns. Uh, it's not like um, oppressive and terrible. Once you're into it, you'll do it. But I found myself forgetting every once in a while. So uh, some folks like a really clean bot for a solo mode, myself included. Not as clean as I would want. Um, but the it having the one board unlock the core experience that I've played multiple games of the solo Excellent, excellent job. Thank you very much for including that uh, and giving love to the solo fans. <laughs> so then then you have what I think is the uh, most impactful mechanical draw of the call, which is the chain deck. So many deck builders include ways of adding negative cards uh, into your deck. And you think of Dominion, where it's like the curse cards. For the most part, they just sit there and gunk up your hand. And that's the most effective thing they do. You have to call them, you have to deal with them. But really, they're just there as like ballast in your hand. They don't uh, really do anything uh, impactful or active. These, <laughs> they're so active and they impact every single turn just immediately because they force that choice. Are you going to play it now? Uh, and you'll absorb the bad thing, you'll lose all those followers, add all those stops to the board, but get rid of it. So, you know, absorb the bad thing or delay it, you know, punt your mature phase or deal with it some other way and have it in your deck. Uh, so it's felt in both air, both phases of the game, the, the board play and the acquisition of new cards, you feel the chains. You also feel that choice where in the multiplayer game, you have that uh, option to like, okay, I'm going to you know get rid of my chain so I have a clean hand so I can restore you, play from that restore deck. And working that out amongst players, even two players, okay, I'm going to dump mine and you're going to keep yours, I'm going to play this. Uh, or like, you know, in a, a bigger game, who's going to do it? Who's going <laughs> to, you know, well, who's in a position to kind of, you know, my deck, I, I'm trying to get to this card and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so that conversation about how we're going to deal with these chains, they're so insistent and impactful in a way that a lot of curse cards in uh, deck building games aren't. And I thought that was really great. I'm sure other deck builders have done similar things in terms of how uh, much it intrudes upon me, but I haven't played it. I think that the uh, just the base way that the, the chain interacts with you is great. I say that uh, to give context to uh, two overall uh, critiques that I have. Uh, so first of all, the initial complaint of players was like the deck building wasn't quite active enough. It was very simple in the base game without like anything going on. And um, you pulled like the blind from the bottom from like, you know, decks that were all face down and you got what you got. Uh, this game gives you a market. Great. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but also as that chain to add that level of complexity. The thing I really wanted, though, was a way to uh, actively call cards. You got to call those. Those one cards are terrible, and there's nothing in the game that makes them better. So if you are playing a game without the one character, John, who can call cards, or you don't have access to the four card, the one four faith card that can call, uh, then you're playing with just like this these fat decks, and you have to punt your, your mature face because you don't want your deck to get too, too bloated. Where is the calling? <laughs> uh, I know like there's the mechanism where you put your two cards away, but those are the, aren't the ones I want to call. I want to call the one cards. I want to get rid of those starter cards. Uh, and there's, that's still a struggle. Uh, so I would like I would like to have seen in terms of the rework deck building, not just the chain, but a way to um, you know get those those decks a little bit cleaner. And, and the way it is, certain cards that you buy from the market are just objectively better than others. So I, I, that's a little bit of a struggle for me. If I have the John card, then I'm fine. <laughs> if I'm playing solo, I put a John card in there, then I'm totally fine. So it's not a deal breaker there. The other critique I have is the restore cards and how they work. I love the core idea of this of the uh, the uh, restore deck, where you know that whole thing of like you know who's going to be the restored, who's going to be the restored, and all that kind of thing. That's great, and I love the idea of a story behind that. Why not? Uh, it's the it's a uh, historical time period, there were interactions, and the early church were a bunch of people. They weren't heroes, they were just people, and where the stories have a warmth to them, 
where you know you're they're reenacting these or these scenes from the early church like okay am i going to help uh this person who's struggling am i going to go donate to this local thing am i going to go you know to the prelate and talk to them that's all cool S too many of them play out like a morality play and i'm a i have an m div uh from notre dame i'm a catholic uh, person i go to church every uh sunday and i'm steeped in this stuff taught catholic history the whole bit so i know quote unquote, the right answer in those certain cards where there is a right answer. To be clear, not all of them are like that. Some of them have ex both excellent choices. Some of them have both poor choices, but some of them, enough of them are like good choice, bad choice, often aligning with Christian values. So the, 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 the best choice was often talk to the church, very social gathering. And then it's like, okay, uh, choose to talk to people or go it alone. Go it alone is almost always not great <laughs> if, that's, if that's the choice in front of you. Uh, so I, it just, it didn't feel open to people who just who aren't, you know, uh, thinking along those lines. And this game definitely wants to be a game for gamers. It doesn't want to be a game just for the silo of uh you know christian players uh, so and I, I get that not every card is like that in fact you no know, maybe half the deck is not like that but because there are some cards like it i don't know as a person that is playing so like if i get bit once then i'm gonna approach every card every choice is like hmm what's the what is the card trying to tell me what's the right choice and that just didn't put me in a, a very like you know fun mood like i mean i want the, the story should be fun the story should be open and absorb me into the world not kind of m challenge me to make this like discerning choice based on an ethic system that might not be mine so great idea great implementation the the back and forth is great but the that part of it uh i think could have been uh, addressed a little bit better having said all that taking the pluses and the minuses the deck building the solo mode, yes! <laughs> and just the continued love for a product that I always liked. Uh, I personally would have given a seal of excellence to Commissioned, uh, the base game. And I believe that Sam Haley did as well. Uh, I'm going to go with the call. I'm going to go seal of approval, 7.0. Uh, so it just for the change deck and some of the other little um, additions, excellent. Watch out for some of the things that I talked about, or maybe there aren't problems for you. Uh, that's for you to judge. I hope that I've laid out my case uh, for what the call will give you. If you can change your mind, you can change the world, people. So until next time, later, everybody. Yeah.